Okay, what's going on, guys? This is Matt. We are here on Sunday, the 13th, and we're just going to do a top down analysis on Euro. And yeah, the plan is essentially doing two things today one, um, top down on EU slash dollar index. Okay. And number two, it's just going to be going through, like, if I were to be going through the challenges, right? The funding challenges. Um, I guess tips, right? We're gonna, if I were to go through them, how would I manage my risk? How would I, how would I approach it essentially? Okay, so those are gonna be the two talking points of today. So yeah, let's just break down dollar index. Let me have a sip of my coffee here. Let's break down uh, EU and, and see what's going on. So first of all, in the monthly, what do we see here? Like, I really, really like to see this, yeah? Where we had this monthly low here, monthly low there. Look at that, equal, equal lows there. We had this beautiful hidden base right there, mitigated it, and then got this, what, 400 pip move almost? Yeah, almost 400 pip move out to take out the high of this month. Now, the thing that I don't like to see is this, you know, it's rejecting, right? We want to see it get, get above it and get nice. Um, and so we have to see what's going on here. However, on the monthly, let's look at some different zones, right? We have this hidden base right there. At the highs, we have this hidden base right here. So we're kind of in the middle of it and we have some liquidity up there, okay? So we swept, take out those highs. And now that's a potential sweep for going down or it's going to be a continuation up. Okay, so let's go to the weekly just to refine. Right here, that hidden base, you can see that just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, like that. Sweet, right there. Okay, now on the weekly, it's super interesting, right? On the weekly, it's super interesting because what we have is we have, I can see both scenarios, right? Where we have a sweep here, that, of that low, we break up. Now, I also see at the same time, we have this swing point here, sweep, and now we break down. My main bias is going to be bullish because what I see here is this is that order block, right? And it's a high, high probability order block. We have it right underneath this sweep. And so I would not be surprised for price to either go from here or dig back down a little bit deeper into it and go from there. Those are really my two scenarios. And again, we also missed that 1500 big figure. It, it front run it. I don't like to see that. I like to see it get to those big figures uh, and, and deal within that range. You can see right here, look at the, the 1.200 big figure right here. You can see it taps it, it goes through it, and then we get that response out. Just accumulating orders and, and, and uh, doing some price dealings at that range. Like that's, that's what we wanna see. You can see right down here as well, the 11500s, taps it, boom, right? So I like to see those big figures get hit. Uh, when it doesn't, when it front runs them, especially when there's an imbalance here and then a POI right above it. I mean, I just don't like to see that. So what I would like to see personally is more that. That's I'm, I'm aiming bullish. However, what we have to understand is what, right? This could easily be a continuation down, even though yes, this broke right here. You can see that we also did the same thing right here, right? We broke right there and then we went down. Uh, it can just be a sweep and continuation. And again, where would it go? Right down here, right? If it's going to go down, it's probably going to search to fill this imbalance and get down somewhere into here, right? But again, this is kind of irrelevant because I very highly doubt that in the next week, we're going to be dropping down uh, 500 pips. I mean, could it happen? Sure, absolutely. Especially with everything that's going on in the world with the uh, you know Ukraine, Russia uh, situation, of course. But as of right now, uh, I'm going to assume that that's not going to happen. And I'm just going to have to wait and to see if we have or if this will support, right? If this order block is going to be valid for the support. We don't have any um, confirmation on it, though, to be honest. Like, we don't have any uh, fair value gap to confirm it. So that's, that's not what we want to see. Uh, ideally, we see that it does confirm. However, at this level, what else do we have? We have breaker block right here okay this last up candle led to these significant down candles that swept liquidity right here it grabbed liquidity immediately consumed 
So if we're if if it's going to continue down, it should continue down from there. It doesn't. Instead, it breaks up inefficiently and it feeds right back into what the breaker block as well as this here, this hidden base, right? So and this is all at that higher time frame, right? The weekly order block, right at right at the front of it. So and one three five hundred, right? The one three five hundred big figure. So we know that this is going to be a very, very high resistant level, in my opinion. I believe that at least we're going to start to see some reaction up. Um, and that's it. So this is going to be my main focus for the week. I'm just wanting to see how price is going to be reacting here. If there's going to be a long scenario, I want to be longing from right here with the potential, right? Obviously, if, if we're following a new structure like this, then guess what? We're going to be targeting this high up into this level. You can refine it. However, I'm, I'm just going to leave it how it is and then refine it at, uh, at a later at a later date, right? Right now, I, I just want to see price get up into that level because again, we could easily rip up into that level and then something like that happens, you know, or something like this down into this order block happens. So that's going to be my my first um, area of interest. I, this is really, really high, high resistance right here. I don't think it's just going to fall right through. Um, however, if it does, what I'd be looking at is this. Why this? Because what we have is simply this low to this high is going to be 50%. You can see this isn't quite at, at discount of this price swing. So if we get into discount, this is going to be that first level, that first gap right there. At the same time, at the same time, what we have is this last down candle like that. Um, last down candle like that, come back up. And so we do have another level here, and that's also the two 500s. Mm -hmm. So these are going to be the high resistant levels for longs. Okay. These are going to be the high resistance levels for longs um, and everything else. Um, you know, we'll see. Because again, we could also reach down to the final imbalance. That's going to be the most extreme point of this price like. However, when we're up into this level, you can see when we're up into this premium, ideally, we're looking for shorts, right? To fill, to go into discount. All right, but again, let's focus on the relevant levels. We have this level again, this isn't relevant. So I'm just going to take that off. I would say that all of these are really the relevant areas, right? On the, the daily four hours, so on. Again, I'm not going to refine it down to the to the uh, this level right now. I can because that is a high probability order block. However, we're in this breaker block. And so it doesn't have to get down here, especially because I see how the breaker block, this is the very, very low of the breaker block. So it doesn't necessarily have to get down in here. This to me could, could be a completed corrective structure before we continue up, right? Additionally, or alternatively, what I see right now is I see that this, if it's going to continue down, which it might, right? Because we are in, first of all, we're in 50, we're in discount of this. Right. This could be the, the price swing consolidation break consolidation come back down and now we're going up. That could easily be the long scenario. Mm -hmm. However, if we're going to be in discount of this leg to get back down to here and use this as the inducement, then what I would anticipate is that we have what consolidation sweep up break down inducement break down come up above the inducement to somewhere to some fair value gap up into here or to some order block up there. And then we'll proceed down like that. That's what I see the scenario being. So either way, I think that what we're looking at right here are, are going to be good levels for to go long, right? At least up to where? At least up to this inducement, or I would say actually at very least up to this block right here, right? To fill this imbalance. Then if it's going to continue down with its, its structure, then, then it'll go down from there. However, I would really like to see price to come back up into this level like that. Um, again, if it's going to fade down, if it opens up this week and starts fading, 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 it doesn't matter. I'm still going to be looking for something like for uh, something like that. Um, obviously, given how the day is progressing and, and all the liquidity that's building intraday, I'll, I'll assess. But again, these are very high resistant levels. I, I very highly doubt that we're just going to get a quick sweep right through it. Um, and so I would really just anticipate to get some sort of reaction from here for longs. And if it's going to go down, I'd look for longs from here, right? And then that, then we have this to go for long, right? So those are going to be my two scenarios, either longs from here or from here. If I'm looking for shorts, let's go into the 15 minute. 
right? We have this being that major sweep, that break of structure, we come back up into, the, into it right here. Um, this is potentially an inducement, right? We have a nice clean leg. I would not be surprised to see at least this happen. If it breaks above, then great, because then we could be looking for, again, there's imbalance up to here, there's FEG up to there. This is a higher time frame. FEG up here, right? We look at which level swept the highs there. Um, and let's see, 30 minute, you can see realistically this whole thing is the last up candle that swept liquidity. So again, these are gonna be the kind of key levels that we're gonna be playing off of, right? Um, I still think that the higher probability scenario is going to be up um, for to achieve at least this inducement. However, for right now, you can see there's a beautiful, beautiful level right there. We, I can definitely see us getting down into, right? That swept liquidity, that one big candle inducement, um, or sorry, that one big candle led to that sweep mitigated. And then what do we have here? Injection of liquidity, significant liquidity, and it was on a news event. So would not be surprised to get back down into this liquidity base right here. Um, so again, but I'm just going to leave this up here because obviously, right, we're right now it's playing a significant role. If I go down to the five minute, you'll see we tapped it literally to the T, right? We also have a couple sweeps here. Nice clean leg. This happened on late Friday. So I definitely would not be surprised to see this. The way it's developing right now, it's looking bullish to me. Um, I like to see these nice sweeps here you know, we start to are now respecting this kind of uh, some structure. Again, we still haven't broke above this high, but we'll see how the market opens and stuff. But again, I think at least we're going to be coming into this imbalance fill right here, right? Right into that imbalance, get somewhere up to it. And then we can start assessing uh, how price is looking, right? Because it, potentially we're going to dive deeper into what? Into this leg right here. After this sweep, break a structure, like that. Okay, so this is potentially a strong low. And then we have all this imbalance and stuff right here that came in on that news injection. So there definitely is more downside potential. However, I'm not going to ref over refine it to the five minute right now, because again, this is the weekly forecast, right? This is the weekly I'm, I'm viewing it in terms of what could happen during the week, where are the levels that I'm looking at for the week, right? So if I'm looking on the daily, or the, the daily and four hour, what do we have? We have imbalance fill right there and a level right there. These are the most um, the most likely kind of areas where I'm gonna be looking at for price response. And then we can start to assess how the week is developing, right? In regards to a cycle. If we open up, for example, and we just start to see this right away and we have what? 20 pip, 30 pip, 50 pip move right here to start the week. And then we can potentially anticipate some more downside for the week, right? Maybe this is gonna be a downside week and then that's gonna be the, the weekly cycle, right? Potentially that's going to be the case, but we're going to have to adapt as price develops and just keep an eye on all of, all of the significant levels around here. Right now, I can refine it up to here, right? That's what I'm going to be looking at, the 800s. Okay, imbalance fill, 800s. So we have really a lot of stuff going on here, okay? Um, again, I don't think that this is going to be relevant as of right now, 120 pips up, but we'll leave it. We'll leave it on. We'll leave it on for now. We'll leave it on for now. I don't want to clutter up the charts. This is already way, way too much <laughs> for me, honestly. Uh, like I wouldn't even include this because uh, I'm, I'm just aware of that now. Like I'm aware that, that that's going to be uh, a key level, but this is, this is the main trading range right now that I'm seeing that we're playing within. And so either we're going to come like this and down more like this and down more, or this is going to be going up like that. Okay. So again, a couple of scenarios right now, it's not the most uh, clear if that's going to happen. Um, and then, uh, but, but we just have to adapt, right? We market the levels on the week and then we adapt and that's it. No, there's no point in trying to project and, and trying to say, oh, it has to go here. It has to go here. No, the weekly projection or the weekly review mm -hmm. is literally just to market the key levels, get an idea of where the higher time frame order flow is looking, what's going on. Look, we had a sweep. We're coming down. We're respecting now. Uh, we're respecting, uh, you know, this four hour order block, and now we're pushing down. And so, yes, it is looking bearish on this time frame on the four hour. However, we do have to realize that we did break this. Okay. So just keep that in mind and keep, keep an eye on these levels for the coming week, right? 13,800, 13,500 right here. 
we'll see if we can get dig, dig a little bit deeper into this order block and uh, and so on right at the 1300s potentially big figure and then we'll see if we can start to get a rally or again if it's just going to be consolidating to take price even lower and potentially even go and take out this low into that that deeper um level right it could easily happen we just have to stay adaptive okay so there's that and now let's go into the dollar index okay so i already did this from from last week so i'll just i'll just show you uh, right you can see that we're just clearly in an uptrend right clearly in an uptrend we hit a significant block right here which is right it's a weekly or it's a month is it a monthly yeah it's a monthly um hidden hidden order base right or hidden order order block our hidden base uh we have a weekly it was i refined it down to this imbalance fill and then i just refined it on the smaller time frames uh up into here you can see strong high breakthrough we have a bunch of liquidity there's a void that didn't get filled and that's what it tagged into right here you can see look where it tagged to the 380s right the 380s and the 400s so that 400 big figure it tapped it broke structure came back up and just absolutely died absolutely melted now we come back down into here and what do i see again two scenarios really right i see consolidation sweep break a structure return to origin continuation but because I know that this is a higher time frame level, I'm more inclined to, to say shorts. I mean, again, we have this level right here. That's super nice that we could see a potential at least retracement back down to under the, under here and then go up for more. Um, or we can see this dying down because again, we have this level that didn't get hit, which is what? A daily order block, right? And you can see um, that we had some equal lows here. However, the one thing I don't like about these equal lows is that it diverged with uh euro euro actually made that sweep right if we look back on euro us dollar right here euro actually made this higher high right dollar index made higher low so that means that to me that it means that they're kind of accumulating the the dollar which means it is definitely more of a bullish sign for sure and if you actually look at these lows right here on the dollar index on the daily and these highs it's the same thing right? They're diverging. So it means that they're accumulating the dollar at a higher level. So these are going to be, um, it's looking more bearish in regards to the SMT and in the dollar correlation. And so if it's going to be more bullish for the dollar, more bearish for foreigns, then what we can anticipate is price getting up a little bit higher into that discount pricing um, or into that premium pricing on the dollar, or potentially even continuing that structure to the upside. Right, so we're getting a little bit of conflicting bias right here. So when that happens, what do we do? We just market the key levels and we play the liquidity and that's it, right? You play the liquidity, you see how price develops and you adapt. There's no point in predicting. There's no point in me predicting and saying, yeah, I'm saying that this is gonna go up like that. Cause I don't know, it could react right here and come down. It could react right here to this interim le level to come back down here and then come back up and then come back down. You know what I mean? Like there's so many options of what it can do when it's when when price is like this it is not clear. Um, so there's no point in in predicting it. All I'm saying is that this is potential retracement and it can go up to here. So you know, it's the same thing with the dollar, right? This is a potential sweep and we could see price coming back down to here. Um, so we just have to wait and see. We have to wait and see how the price develops. But these are going to be the key levels that I'm going to be looking at, right? We have this nice hidden base right there. Build some liquidity in front of it. I can definitely see a reaction right here, just like how on Euro, I can definitely see a reaction right here, right? Again, just have to stay adaptive uh, and stay present. And that's it. If we get up to here, excellent. That means we're going to get down to here, to that daily block there on Euro. Take this out. This is going to be a major inducement, in my opinion, right? This is going to be a major inducement. Then we'll we'll very likely get a reaction from there. So th that's really what I'm going to be looking at for this coming week. I know I, I'm sorry I can't be a little bit more clear on on direction. It's just there's a couple scenarios that I'm seeing happen right now. So I'm just going to wait and see how it plays out throughout the week. But this is essentially how I I do my top down. I start off with euro or i start off with the dollar index depending sometimes i i do i do uh, i do dollar index sometimes i do euro to me it doesn't matter it's as long as i do both of them i don't care um but to me i start off with that and then i just mark out the key zones that are relevant for the coming week 
I keep in mind, I take any notes in a notepad of, hey, just remember that this is diverging here. This is uh, diverging here as well. So we're starting to see potential accumulations on the dollar. Um, however, structure is doing this X, Y, Z, just keeping those notes in the back of my back of my mind so I can make better decisions throughout the week. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically it. And then just draw those zones, set in the alerts, and then wait for my setup. That's it, right? Um, so now I guess we'll go on to the the second portion of it. I hope that this one was this one was clear for you guys. Again, I apologize I can't make it even more clear, uh, just because I'm not too entirely sure of the the longer term direction of the euro and uh, of the dollar. Um, but uh, it's all good. I hope uh, you guys got some value out of that. But next thing I want to talk about too is the funding challenges. So it's something that I've done, I've, I've passed. And um, it's something that I know is a, it's a psychological fuckery, like it really does mess with your head, uh, if you let it. And so I feel like you have to go into, I feel like you have to go into it properly with the right mindset, and you have to go into it with the right um you have to go into it with the right strategy, right? So first of all, what I would say, let's let's break it down, right? We're gonna have to look at, so what to risk, right? For strategy, like what what's your what's your strategy parameters, right? What are what are your strategy parameters that you're doing? And um, in psychology, right? We're gonna have to do touch on these kind of major parts. Okay, so the risk, the strategy, and the psychology. First of all, for the risk, the way that I would do it, or the way that I've done it, and the way that I do it is I start off with 0.5, right? Especially if you're going for the uh, FTMO, which is 10% in the month. Start. I start off with 0.5% per trade because if you start off with 1% per trade and you lose the first four trades and you're down 4% out of the the 10. It really, it really fucks up your psychology. Honestly, it does. And so, start off a little bit smaller. Uh, I wouldn't go any. I wouldn't go to two point or 0.25 because at that point, you're you're really, you you're setting yourself up for for failure, in my opinion, because you have to hit such a high R and you have to take way more trades. And uh, I just don't. I just don't. For me, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense because I'm not going to lose 20 trades in a row at 0.5 right? I'm not going to lose 20 trades in a row. Like, so 0.5% is the absolute minimum I start off with, right? So I start off with 0.5%. As soon as the account gets to 3%, okay? As soon as the account gets to 3% on that challenge, I up my risk to 1%. Why? Because again, we're, we're, you, we're trying to pass the challenge, right? We're trying to pass the challenge. We're not trying to... Um, uh, grow responsibly or whatever. It is like a little bit of a gamble when you, and you have to, you have to frame it as that, right? You have to frame it as something that you were trying, your, your attention is on the outcome. Sorry. That's what I meant. Your attention is on the outcome as opposed to the process. Uh, unfortunately, that's how it has, that's how it, it, it kind of, what the challenge kind of does puts your attention on that. And so what you have to do uh, is kind of just keep upping your risk a little bit. So right here, until you have 3% and you have a padding on your account, now you can lose a, a few trades. And then if you end off the month and you're getting close to that, the end of the month, you're still profitable, then I would just wait for the rest of the month to go by, get your free retry, and then start again. But you have 0.5%, you get up, you build up to 3%. Then you start risking 1%, right? Until you get up to either the final 10% or you know, you get up to 8% or whatever, uh, eight to 10%. So un until you pass, I would just, I would do it like that. Now, if you're at 8% or something, and it's maybe you have one day or a couple of days left, like you're, you're really pushing the, the final limit. I would just go straight to 1.5% right risk and just go for the past or the 2% and go for the past. Because ultimately what this allows is this, is that you have right a 5% loss limit per day, which means that you can take one trade like this. Well, you could take two, but I wouldn't, right? I would take one trade with a, with a 2%. And then for my next trade, I'd go 1.5%, just so then you're giving yourself that extra padding in case of slippage and stuff like that. But you have your 5% loss limit per day. So I wouldn't go any higher than 2%. But again, you're there for with one goal and it's to pass the challenge in, within those 30 days. So 
let's go, right? Like you have to pass a challenge, use your risk accordingly, build up your, build up your, the little padding. So then if you fail that challenge in that month, at least you're not failing. And then you have to, you have to buy a new account, right? You're failing it. So then you have at least a little bit of padding here. So then you get the free retry if that's, so you're covering your ass essentially at the end of the day. So just to reiterate, start off with 0.5% until you hit up to the point or to, until you pat, uh, added 3% to 4% on the account. Then you go for 1% risk until you get to, until you pass or until you get to 8%. And if you're really running out of time, then I would risk, risk a little bit more, 1.5 to 2% until you, uh, until you pass, but be very aware of your 5% per day daily limit, right? Do not break that risk one, 2% per trade. If you lose that, no worries, right? No worries. You go back down to 1.5 or 1% per trade. And uh, you just be careful that you, you don't, you don't break the, the rules. Okay. Strategy parameters. Now, now that we have our risk, our risk parameters set up. Okay. Now that we have our risk parameters set up, what are you going to do for your strategy? Now, this is something that, um, you have to have dialed in beforehand, right? You have to have dialed in, in beforehand before you start trading the challenge and you have to have data on it and you have to understand what your strategy allows for. If you're not hitting 10% per month on, on your strategy, what makes you think you're going to hit it on a challenge when you have much more psychological impact, right? When there, when there's much more uh, psychological demands um, to, to hit it. I mean, it's very difficult right? So you have to make sure that with your strategy, you're already hitting at least 10%. You can, you can hit 10% in a month. Now, additionally, what you need for your strategy parameters is you have to have what? So first of all, it's going to be your risk, right? Which we already, which we already established. It's going to be your risk. How much are you going to risk per trade? We got that done. Number two, right? What is going to be you're like the typical risk to reward, because this is going to be important. You know, you can swing for the fence and go for 20, 30 hours uh, if it fits, if that fits your strategy. But I think the best way to approach an FTMO is when it hits three R, take partials, take partials and cover yourself. Because again, you're not trying to, you're not trying to, to uh, trade normally in this case, right? Like you have to trade so then you can hit 10% in that month and you can, and you can, you know, you can win essentially you can pass for me, at least when you're taking partials at three R, which happens pretty often, right? A lot of the times, maybe you get stopped out of break even because you're going for that 10 R or 20 R or whatever, and you get stopped out of break even again for this challenge, we, we want to build up a padding. So then at least we can get a free retry, right? At least we can get a free retry. And so I would say, take those partials at three R and so on. And then it covers your ass to continue on for the next challenge. And so you're not paying. Um, so you're not paying again. And also at the same time, your partials. So say you take off 1%, right? So say you're up, you, you, you trade and you hit a three R. And so you take off 1% there, right? Now the next trade, you're risking 0.5% and you lose, right? So now you're at 0.5%, right? Now the next trade you take, and now you take parcels again at, at 1%. And so now you're up 1.5%. And now at these, like, you see what I'm saying? How this covers you. It keeps covering your ass until you get to the point where you're at that next risk stage, which is going to be about 3%. Then you can start risking 1% per trade. And you're going to do the exact same thing. You take it off at three R. So now you take it off and you're at, you know, 1.5% or 2%, wherever, however much partials you take off at that three R. And so now you're building up, building up slowly. And again, that's all you need to do. And in, in my opinion, I would say, try not to swing for the fences on the trades. Instead, go for those little ones, take your partials and just build up your account balance until you can start risking a little bit more per trade, right? That's what I would do uh, personally. Okay. So keep the RR a little bit tighter and have specific risk to reward. I would say specific risk to reward rules that you're following and uh, you're adjusting towards. Uh, again, it's going to be a lot more day trading esque. Like you're not, it's for me, honestly, every time, uh, like every time I see it and, and every time uh, I've done the challenge, cause I've done it um, a few times I've failed a couple times and then I passed a couple of times as well. So again, because it, there's much, it, it's a little bit more of a psychological thing, you know, uh, and just being honest, you know, like if, if like, like I said, 
I'm not perfect as well. And the reason why I failed it was purely psychological. You get, and I get, but I failed it, but got the free retry every single time. I've never failed it and lost it. Um, so I've been positive every time. And this has been helped. This helped, right? This, this is the way that I did it. I had my, my risk rules like that. I had my RR set beautifully. And then for psychology, or if I, for psychology, it's just about putting it up on the pedestal. Like you cannot put it up on a pedestal. Like if you can prove to yourself in trading an everyday strategy that you can do it, you have your specific strategy parameters that you follow, right? Which again, you have to identify and you have to, you have to test, Hey, when price does X, Y, and Z, these are my actions. This is where I'm taking profits. This is what, uh, you know, this is where I uh, am getting out so on and so forth. Um, you have to have that beforehand and that's going to affect that's going to help with your psychology but try not to put it up on a pedestal guys i mean this you can just because you don't pass it now doesn't mean you won't pass it ever and just because you failed it now doesn't mean that you are a failure um you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to achieve it and i totally understand that because it, it's it's a potential it, you see the potential of it that how much it can change your life how much it can help you how much it can help your family so on and so forth and I totally, totally understand that. But try not to put it up on the pedestal. Try and go one good trade, right? This is a concept by Mike Bellafiore. He's a, um, he is a um, trade or he's the owner of the S&P Capital. So he talks about one good trade, okay? What does that mean? You have, you see the market, you're, you go to your charts, on that day and you have, you see one trade setup getting in. Is it a good trade? Yeah, it is a good trade. It's setting up and it has, it fits all your parameters, you take it, right? Take it. Always assess, is this a good trade? If it is, focus on that one and take that one. Don't worry about if this is a loss, you know, if, if this is a loss, then that means I'm gonna be down a percent or I'm gonna be down 0.5%, oh no, like blah, 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 no. One good trade at a time. It's just like, you know, if you're a basketball player, you go to the free throw line. Hey, I've taken this, this, this free throw, this shot a million times in practice, right? I just have to focus on it. Boom. One good, one good shot, one good shot, one good shot, one shot at a time. That's all you focus on. And it's the same concept as this one good trade, focus on that trade. If it's a loser, it doesn't matter. You don't even think about what the, what the, uh, what the um, outcome is going to be. You just focus on one good trade at a time, one good trade. Always put in your best effort to take the best trade possible. If it's not present, then you don't take anything, right? But always ask yourself, is this a good trade? If it is, accept the risk, go for it. Listen, risk is the, is the cost of opportunity. You wanna get the FTMO account, but you're too afraid to risk. You're not gonna get access to that opportunity, okay? So my recommendation is accept the risk. If you fail, at least you went out swinging. At least you did the best that you could possibly do. And at least you took, you're going to learn something from it, right? Do the best that you can take, again, use those risk parameters that I said earlier, take your profits along the way. Try not to be greedy and try not to go for that one home run hit to pass the, the challenge in, in one, in one trade, you know, just follow the system, take your trades out when you have some profit and pad up, pad up, pad up, pad up your, your account. And that way you can get free redos if you have to, but at the same time, you're going, you know, you're trading as if it's a real account and you're going to be going for that pass. So again, guys, that's, that's basically all I have to say for it, or that's how I would do it uh, again. And so I hope that that added some value and some light into, you know, how I would approach it and how you should approach it or how I think you should approach it. You can do whatever you want. If you don't want to risk 0.5, you want to risk 0.25, go ahead. If you don't want to take three R and you want to take 10 R's or 20 R's and, that, and that's it, then that's fine. Go ahead. It's your system. It's your process. I'm just showing you how I would do it right now at this stage in my trading and at this stage in my life. This is what I would do right now. I would, the main one is this though, one good trade at a time, one good trade, do the best that you can analyze the best that you can. And if it works out, excellent. If not, you did the best that you could, and at least you failed pursuing something that's much bigger than yourself. And it, it's something that's so significant that it can impact not only your life, but your family's life and who knows, other lives around you. Um, and you should be proud of that, regardless of the outcome.
All right, guys. So that's it for me today. And I will check you guys later. All right. Cheers. Have an amazing weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl and we'll chat soon. Cheers.